Hey guys, Oregon Templar here, with a preview of the Spanish election. Now most people are probably going, why the hell are you doing a preview of the Spanish election? Who cares about Spain? Well, I think it's interesting. I like electoral politics. It's kind of my thing. I like polls. I like doing predictions. I like comparative political systems. It's what I studied in, it's what I studied in school. So that all being said, um, I thought it would be interesting to do a preview. I think this is actually of greater importance um, because in a lot of the, uh, particularly Mediterranean countries, we're seeing a gradual polarization where kind of the far right and the far left are starting to get more and more powerful. Um, at the moment, it's largely the far left taking power. In Italy, we had um, the Socialist Party win a majority or a near majority. Um, we had Strizia win a, a, a working majority in Greece. And in Spain, it looks like we're heading for a number of far-left parties, um, possibly gaining power, and in Portugal as well. Um, we are seeing a dramatic shift to the left in the Mediterranean. And I think Spain is, to some extent, um, indicative of this. So let's just look at the um, recent history of Spanish elections. So we're going to go back to 1996. So broadly speaking, in Spain, there's two main political parties. Uh, there's the People's Party, or the Popular Party, as they're sometimes known, uh, which is a center-right to right-wing party. Uh, Spain doesn't have a further right party. They don't have a, uh, not a far-right party, they don't have that either, but they don't have a UKIP or an alternative for Germany or a Liga Nord or just a party that has right-wing as opposed to center-right. Um, so... People's Party is a bit further to the right, so they are a conservative, liberal conservative, Christian democratic, um, economic liberalism, and Spanish unionism. They're the main Spanish unionism. Um, in Spain, um, separatism is a massive problem. Uh, Spain was essentially a union of a lot of smaller kingdoms uh, around the kingdom of Castile. Uh, Castilian Spanish is the um, the main dialect in, in uh, Spain, but all the regions are trying to promote their dialects and revive basically languages that were dead. So you have the Basques, who probably have the best claim. Then you have countries that never existed, like Catalonia, etc., um, who claim that they are um, being oppressed by the Spanish state. Um, judging from the way I'm talking, I, I don't really have much sympathy for them aside from the Basques. I think the Basques are different, but the rest of them are just kind of Spanish to me. Spain's a cultural union. So the, um, the People's Party is very strongly in favor of the monarchy, to some extent the Catholic Church, although they seem to not do much towards that. And, um, the Spanish, um, they're very strongly Spanish unionist, and they're against people leaving... Then we have the Socialist Workers Party, um, which is in favor of federalism, is pro-Europe, and is in favor of social democracy. So they're a mainstream socialist party. I think they are Spanish unionist, but not particularly so. Um, I think the People's Party wants a bit more centralization, uh, and the uh, Socialist Party wants more decentralization. Um, the People's Party tends to, uh, in Spain, the right tends to be more in favor of centralization than the left, which is a legacy from the uh, Falange. So the People's Party is, generally speaking, the largest party in Spain, um, largely because the left-wing vote is divided between a number of different parties. Um, and we'll get into those um, a bit more once... Um, these things all change very quickly, so we'll look at the main players once we get to a more recent election. So the, the right won a pretty big victory in um, the year 2000, and they joined the Coalition of the Willing as part of the Iraq War. Um, because they joined the Coalition of the Willing, um, Al-Qaeda set off a bomb in Grenada, and the next day, basically, um, Spain um, showed that they were going to stand up to terrorism um, by electing a left-wing government that immediately pulled out of Iraq and surrendered. So, I mean, that's good. I mean, I mean, the Iraq war was bullshit, don't get me wrong, I don't support the Iraq war, but, uh, they basically said, okay, if, if you kill a couple people, we're gonna give up, and we're gonna go home, and we're gonna cry, and we're gonna elect a, a dildo government. So that's basically what happened. Um, yeah. So Spain gave up. 
Uh, and a lot of people in Spain converted to Islam because of that, because it, it, it renewed an interest in Islam in Spain. Don't ask me why. So they were in power for two elections. Um, they did fairly well. We'll get to all these these, these randies in a minute. Um, <coughs> so the most recent election in 2011, um, the People's Party managed to win a huge victory and get back into power after most of a decade out of power. Uh, the People's Party also did well in southern Spain for the first time, apparently. Um, as you can see, the People's Party, despite not how they got a lot of the vote in that election, they will not get anywhere near that in the next election. Uh, vote splitting is very complicated in Spain, and we'll get into that. Because uh, there are left-wing and right-wing independence parties. So, I mean, if, if you're like a left or right-wing independence party, what do you do? Like, let's say you're a member of a right-wing independence party. Does, do you have more priority to have a right-wing federal government or to get more power for your party? Because a lot of the local parties are like conservative or Catholic or just kind of like center-right or right-wing. So do, do you vote, if the election is going to be close, do you vote for those guys or do you vote for the People's Party, um, even if they are centralist? If you're left-wing nationalist, do you vote for the, um, the Socialist Workers' Party or for your guys? It's very complicated. So... This election is, is a very big deal because we've had a cup we've had two new political parties that have stormed on to the scene and have become have dramatically upset the political balance. So if you remember, um, if we look at previous elections, the Spanish the People's Party was getting nearly half the votes, about forty percent, and now they're only getting twenty seven percent of the vote. So that's that's a decrease of like twenty percent. And that's going to a couple new parties. Um, so Spain is, um, and a lot of these kind of small little parties are getting wiped out in the face of um, the new parties who are emerging. So we have the People's Party and the Socialist Worker Party, which are currently the two largest parties. Um, the new parties that were introduced were both left-wing. So um, we'll go through the little parties. Um, so they mainly take votes away from the... Uh, left-wing parties um mainly the socialist workers party as you can see here as um podmos uh gained a lot of steam the um i'll make that bigger as podmos gained steam uh the socialist party mainly suffered as a result of it and they were briefly in third place and now as citizens gain steam podmos is going down so basically of the three largest parties three of them are left-wing and one of them's right-wing and I think Spain has a first-past-the-post system, so the People's Party may be able to win with such a small percent of the vote because there's going to be so much vote splitting. So we're just going to look at the various factions in Spain. So I've covered the People's Party and the Socialist Party. We also have the Communist Party. Um, the Communist Party is fairly strong in Spain compared to other countries. Uh, they get about 5% of the vote, which is fairly significant. Uh, they have a not they qualify for some seats and they are a far left communist party who is part of european united left and nordic green left uh so basically just communism then we have um another one which is um union progress and democracy which is um like the biggest group of randys ever i mean i don't even know what to say what is this mix? Progressivism, social liberalism, centralism, radicalism, reformism, Spanish nationalism, European federalism. But those two are opposite. Okay, so these are just like some randies um, who, who, who have um, some power. I'm not sure if this is a... Oh, okay, sorry. This is the left-wing Basque party. Sorry, it's confusing. Um, so we have this myriad of just random crap. So this is kind of what the... Um, the the left wing Basques vote for is is these guys. Uh, there's also um, kind of a right wing Basque party. Uh, so they're a bunch of randies. They don't really get many votes. Then we have Convergence and Union, which is the main party in Catalonia, and they are a right wing party uh, who are Catalonian natural nationalism, populism, Christian democracy, 
social democracy, independentism, conservatism, liberalism. So it's basically, once again, a bunch of randies um, who are affiliated with both the European People's Party and the Liberal Party. So they're a member of two European political parties at once. Um, so I think they have a fair number of seats in the... Let me see here. Um... Let me see. What what is the um what was the results of the previous election? Let me just go back. Um yeah, so they, they randomly got a couple seats. Uh then we have so we have Convergence Union, then we have Emoir, which is um the other Basque Nationalist Party. I think there's three Basque Nationalist Parties. Sorry, the previous one was Basque Autonomism, not Basque Independence. This is the um the left wing socialist Basque Independence Party. Um, then we have the Basque Nationalist Party, which is right wing and it's, it's, it's the conservative, uh, right wing Basque party in, in Basque land, we have, um, like four or five different Basque parties, all of which, um, are pro independence. Like, like I said, it's very confusing. So then we have the Basque Nationalist Party. Then we have the Republican left of Catalonia, which is the left-wing one as opposed to the other left-wing independence party. Do you see what a mess this is? It's very confusing. But none of these parties really matter. No one gives a shit about any of them. Um, probably all these, these crappy little nationalist parties. I call them crappy just because they're irrelevant. Um, they're probably fairly relevant on a local level, but to the national political scene, they, they don't really matter. The two that matter that have appeared and have taken pretty much all the votes of all the minor parties... As you can see, these these two, um, Union Progress and United Left, have vanished in favor of Citizens and Podemos. Uh, Podemos is literally Spanish for "Yes, we can," um, which is pretty lame. Um, so let's see here. So Podemos is direct democracy, left wing populism, democratic socialism, so soft euro skepticism, left wing, but they are member of the far left. So I don't really get why it's left-wing. They are a far-left party. They're basically like the Spanish version of Strizia. And if we look at this, they were formerly in in first place. They were briefly in first place. Um, so yes, we can. So um, policies... Uh, the policies were described by the New York Times. Let me find this. New York Times... Um, referred to the 36-page campaign program that read like a, a wish list. So, the New York Times, which is probably like the most left-wing major paper in America, referred to Podmos as like a left-wing wet dream or left-wing wish list. The New York Times <laughs> referred to what these guys wanted to do as a left-wing wish list, which just shows how fucking far right they are. Um... So yeah, so that's that's Podemos. Um, yes, we can. Um, so they're just weird, um, and they're do currently doing well. And then we have Citizens, which is another bunch of randies. So social democracy, social liberalism, sec secularism, autonomism, European federalism, post nationalism. Um, so they are um, an anti um, uh, anti nationalist party, anti Spain. Uh, they favor a centralization of the EU, an abolishment of nation states, in particular Spain, and just kind of blend uh, the Euro blender. They support that, and then they randomly have some right wing economic policies, um, some some stuff to um, uh, try and improve the economy. So this is kind of the mess we have in in modern Spain. We have the far left. We have this kind of syncretic party that I would just call left wing. Uh, we have the 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 other far left party, the the center left or left party, and then the conservative party. So the right in Spain at the moment is only getting about a quarter of the vote. Now that's very troubling and very disturbing. Um, but to me, is why this election matters. So what are my predictions of what's going to happen? Um, my prediction is probably what will happen is the People's Party will probably win the most seats um, because it has the least vote, vote splitting. 
pretty much all the the right wing or semi right people in, in Spain will vote for them. Um, so they'll probably win a plurality. I don't think they'll win a majority, although with enough vote splitting, they might be able to. And once that happens and we have a um, them, they, I think, will probably either form a coalition with the Socialist Party or um, the Citizen Party. Um, they might form like an economic liberal coalition with the Citizens or, in an, or a grand coalition with the Socialist Party. Uh, because Citizens and Podemos might just be too far out there. And um, neither of uh, the two main parties, neither of them may want to form um, an electoral pact with um, uh, with, a, with either of the two new parties. They just might be too radical, too out there. And that's what often happens in European parties when there's a new force. Uh, the center-left and center-right will kind of form a coalition to prevent new blood and new ideas from entering the political arena. So that's the election preview of Spain. I hope you enjoyed it. This is Argon Templar, signing out.